हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ग्रेड अप दिस इज द पीवाईएसपी सेशन टू ऑन मशीन डिजाइन ओके द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ दिस होल कोर्स ऑफ मशीन डिजाइन इन दिस पीवाईएसपी वी विल बी सॉल्विंग सम ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम्स ओके सो लेट अस सी व्हाट आर द क्वेश्चंस व्हाट वी हैव इन दिस सेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन 2016 सेट 1 द स्प्रिंग कांस्टेंट ऑफ अ हेलिकल कंप्रेशन स्प्रिंग डज नॉट डिपेंड अपॉन ओके द स्प्रिंग कांस्टेंट of a helical compression spring is given by g d to the power 4 upon 8 d cube n where this d is the this is small d is the wire diameter okay this capital d is the coil diameter and this n is the number of active turns active turns okay so we can see the coil diameter it depends number of active turns it depends wire diameter it depends but it does not depend upon the material strength so the answer for this question is a simple option number b okay nothing much to explain in this now let us just, uh, see the next question again asked in 2016 set 2 the forces f1 and f2 in a brake bend and the direction of the rotation of the drum are shown in the figure the coefficient of friction is 0.25 the angle of wrap is 3 pi by 2 radians it is given that r is equal to 1 meter and f2 is equal to 1 newton so then we have to find out the torque in newton meter exerted on the drum is okay very simple problem just use this expression f1 by f2 is equal to e raised to the power of f alpha okay where this is coefficient of friction and this is the angle of wrap and f2 has been given to you as 1 newton and see this is going in this direction that is in the clockwise direction so the force this one that is the force which means which uh, in case of a belt drive also and in case of this things also the force which is there from this side that this is the force this is going clockwise so the force this way that the stretching force is the tight side or the higher force is on that side so it is higher upon lower that is the tight side upon slack side is equal to es to the power f of alpha so f1 f2 is 2 newton so from here we can find out the value of f1 upon 1 is equal to e raised to the power f is 0.25 and this is 3 pi by 2 okay so from here we will find get the value of f2 f1 as 3.248 newtons okay then the torque we have to find out it's a very simple torque is nothing but f1 minus f2 into r the radius so f1 is 3.248 minus f1 is 1 into r is 1 meter okay so this we will get as the value as 2.248 newton meter so the answer is 2.248 okay newton meter very simple problem nothing much to be explained in this just a basic problem of the brakes next question 2017 set 2 A single plate clutch has a friction disc with inner and outer radii as 20 mm and 40 mm respectively. This is the inner one. This is the outer one. This is R I. This is R O. Okay. The friction lining in the disc is made in such a way that the coefficient of friction mu varies radially as mu is equal to 0.01 R, where R is in mm. The clutch needs to transmit a friction torque of 18.5 kilo newton meter. mm kN mm then as per the uniform pressure theory the pressure in mega pascal on the disc is we have to find out the pressure and that is according to the uniform pressure theory c first of all let us write the given values the given values are ri that is the inner radius as 20 mm the outer radius as 40 mm okay and mu has been given to us as 0.01 r that the mu is not constant it varies okay then we have one thing that is total operating force the total operating force is given as the pressure p into the this is the area of the disc okay so let me draw the diagram also for you so that you get a better understanding of this question okay this one and this is a ring okay this don't is not may become that much 
Okay, see this. This is Ri. This is Ro. This is R. And the thickness of this strip is dr. So this is the area of the strip that is 2 pi r dr is the area of the strip and if p is the pressure that is acting at uh, at that uh, point that is at that radius r uh, at radius r then the total operating force is given by p into 2 pi r dr. This is the total operating force. Then, then frictional force will be what? Frictional force will be this force multiplied by mu that is p mu 2 pi r dr and the frictional torque will be what frictional torque the frictional torque will be equal to this multiplied again by r okay so p mu 2 pi r dr into r okay this is the frictional torque that you can write as that mtf Okay, and the total MTF will be the integration of this from Ri to R0. Okay, so what we will do? See this. MT has been given to us as 18.85 kilo Newton mm. Okay, so we will convert this into Newton mm. Okay, this is in Newton mm is equal to P. P is okay. The value of mu mu is given as 0.01 r okay integration from r i to r naught this is mu then 2 pi r dr and again r okay so what are the constants that we can take outside that p is constant 0 0.01 is constant and then 2 pi is constant okay these can be taken outside integration from r i equal to 20 to r naught equal to 40 then we are left with 1 r 2r 3r that is r cube dr okay so 18.85 into 10 to the power 3 equal to p into 0 0.01 into 2 pi and this will come as r naught to the power 4 minus r i to the power 4 divided by 4 okay and this will be 20 means the value of R0 is uh, 40 and Ri is 20 that we can substitute here. So we have to find out this value of a small p. So that will come as 18.85 into 10 to the power 3 into 4 divided by 0 0.01 into 2 pi into 40 is square 40 to the power 4 minus 20 to the power of 4. So on solving this we will get this value as 0 0.5 Newton per mm square or mega Pascal. Okay, very simple question. Just solve it this way. Use the why we have taken the PS constant outside here because it was asked using the uniform uniform pressure theory. Okay, it was asked using the uniform pressure theory. So that's why we have taken this as outside okay and that is this is only what we need to find out that is a small p okay this question is clear i hope okay now let us see the next question this is from the question of brakes asked in set one 2018 the schematic of an external drum rotating clockwise engaging with a short shoe is shown in the figure the shoe is mounted at point y on a rigid lever xyz hinged at point x Okay, a force of 100 Newton, this is the force of 100 Newton, is applied at the free end of the lever as shown. Now, given that the coefficient of friction between the shoe and the drum is 0.3, the braking torque in Newton mm applied on the drum is, and that has to be found up to correct two decimal places. Okay, so in this question, first of all, we have to draw, this is a very simple problem, though it might look a little longer or lengthier, but this is a very simple problem. Okay. First, we have to do draw the FBDs, the FBD of drum, okay, the FBD of the brake drum. See this, this is the brake drum, this is rotating clockwise, so the frictional force at this point will act in this direction, okay, FF, and there will be reaction force, this will be acting this way, okay, and the friction force, we know the relation between the friction force and the normal reaction is nothing but mu into Rn, where this is the nothing but coefficient of friction okay this is the coefficient of friction okay then 
the FBD of shoe or the short shoe you can write or the block C. See this. This is at the point Y. So there will be the normal reaction that is acting upwards Rn. The friction force in this will be acting in this direction that is F into F. Okay. And then there is an applied load that is F. This is the applied load. Okay. So this is the FBD of the short shoe. So now this is hinged at some point X. Okay. This is hinged at some point X. So we have to balance the moments about this point X. The force as this applied force F will cause a clockwise mo uh, will cause an anti-clockwise moment. This force FF at point X will also cause an anti-clockwise moment. Whereas this one RN that is the normal reaction will cause the clockwise moment. Okay. So just doing this that is F into the perpendicular distance of the force F from X is 300. So F into 300 plus FF that is the friction force into the distance. The friction force is acting along this line. So its distance from this is again 300. Okay. And minus Rn into Rn is acting at this line. Okay. Rn is acting at this line. So this into 200 and this is equal to 0. Just replacing this by mu into Rn and the value of mu has been given to you as 0.3. So F and F has given been given as 100, 100 Newton. Okay. So 100 into 300 plus 0.3 into 300 that becomes 90 Rn minus 200 Rn equal to 0. So from here we can find out the value of Rn as the value of Rn from here will come as 272.73 Newtons. Okay. This is the value of Rn. Then we have to find out but we have to find out FF that is the friction force. So FF will come as mu into Rn that is 0.3 into 272.73. This will come as 81.82 Newtons. Okay. And then we have to find out the breaking torque. So the breaking torque is given by, it's very simple. The breaking torque is given by friction, this frictional force into the radius R. Okay, the radius. So frictional force is given as 81.82 into the radius is 100, but this 100 is in mm. So multiplying it by dividing it by 1000, we get this answer as 8.182 Newton meter. So the answer here is 8.182. Okay, very simple problem. Just draw the FBDs, find out the frictional force, the normal reaction, and then the breaking torque. Okay, next question. Again asked in set 1 2018, if the wire diameter of a compressive helical spring is increased by 2%, this is the question from the spring, the change in the spring stiffness in percentage is and that is up to correct two decimal places is asking. Okay. See, we have seen in the first question also of this slide that is K that is the spring constant is given by G D to the power 4 upon 8 D cube N where this is the wire diameter. Okay. And we have to establish a relation between the wire diameter and the spring constant. Okay. So that means K is directly proportional to D to the power 4. That means K2 by K1 is equal to D2 by D1 to the power of 4. And it is saying that the wire diameter increased by 2%. That means D2 is become equal to 1.02 times of D1. So just substituting this, we get K2 by K1 equal to 1.02 D1 upon d1 to the power of 4. So we will get this value as 1.02 to the power 4 and this value is coming as 1.0824. Okay, that means k1 is k1, k2 is equal to 1.0824 times of k1. Then the percentage change we have to find out, the percentage change will be k2 minus k1 upon k1 k1 into 100. Okay. So K2 is 1.0824 K1 minus K1 divided by K1 into 100. Okay. So this goes off. This we are left with 0 0.0824 into 100. And that means it comes out to be 8.24 percentage. So the correct answer for this is 8.24. Okay. It is already asked in percentage. So just no need to put the symbol. It is simply 8.24 percentage. Okay. 
very simple problem just you have to use this expression establish a relationship between the k and the spring stiffness and the wire diameter okay next question which of the bearings should given below should not first of all read this important word should not be subjected to the thrust loads thrust load means the axial loads deep groove ball bearing subjected to both kind of loads thrust as well as thrust as well as radial so they can be used no problem into this then angular contact ball bearings they can also be used for both of them that is thrust plus radial then the fourth one that is the single load tapered roller bearing they can also be used the disadvantage of them is that there has to be two rows for uh, balancing the axial thrust okay then cylindrical straight roller bearing they can only sustain the radial loads and they cannot sustain the thrust loads the thrust loads they cannot sustain the thrust load so they should not be used in case of thrust load so the answer for this question is option number c okay next question 2015 set 3 for ball bearings the fatigue life l the fatigue life l measured in number of in number of revolutions and the radial load f are related by f l to the power 1 by 3 equal to k where k is some constant it withstands a radial load of 2 kilo newton for a life of 540 million revolutions then the load in kilo newton for a life of 1 million revolutions is it's very simple f l to the power 1 by 3 is given as k one condition is given for other we have to find out so we can use the relation as f l f1 l1 to the power 1 by 3 equal to f2 l2 to the power 1 by 3 3 f1 is given as 2 kN for the 540 million revolutions okay this way then we have to find out f2 for 1 million revolution very simple problem f2 solve this take the cube root of 540 multiplied by 2 get the answer as 16.286 kN and it has been asked also in kN so just substitute this value 16.286 nothing is to be done much okay next question the last one for this session 2018 set one a self aligning ball bearing has a basic dynamic load rating that is c10 for 10 raised to the power 6 revolution as 35 kN. if the equivalent radial load on the bearing is 45 kN, then the expected life in 10 raised to the power 6 revolutions is we know that the rating life L10 is equal to C by capital P to the power of a small p. Okay, this is small p is equal to 3 for ball bearings. Okay, for ball bearings. For roller bearing, it's 10 by 3, but here we have given it's a ball bearing, so we will use the value as 3. This L10 we have to find out, C value has been given to us 35. P value, that is the equivalent load has been given to us as 45, the value is 3. So this comes out to be 7 by 9 to the power of 3, the cube of this, we get this value as 4, 0 0.4705 and it is below 0.5. So the correct answer for this is 0.5. So that's it for the sessions on PYSP on machine design. Simple questions are being asked, okay. Just uh, study all those lectures what we what I have taught you okay if you have any problems go through them revise them uh, many times now the exam is very near okay so thank you and uh, I hope yes this subject uh, will help you get good marks in your gate 2019 examination okay so if you have any comments any doubts any queries write to us on the grade up app and on the website your feedbacks are always welcome Okay, so all the best for the GATE 2019 examination. Thank you.